The European Union's Climate Monitoring Service has released a new report highlighting extreme global temperature rises in the past seven years. Last year was the fifth warmest year on record and saw extreme weather events hit every continent on the planet. The last seven years were the world's hottest on record and by a substantial margin, according to the EU's Copernicus Climate Change Service. In 2021, global levels of CO2 and methane reached record highs, while in the same year, wildfires devastated parts of Greece, North America and Siberia. Floods ripped through towns in western Germany. And droughts across Africa led to what was called the first ever climate-induced famine in Madagascar. But as the climate changes, so too does scientists' ability to track and predict it. Thanks to uh, more advanced modelling, etc., we are able with more precision to, uh, to uh, uh, determine, depending on, on different trajectories of emissions, uh, what would be the outcome for the atmosphere. Uh, the, the good news is because of that, uh, we can show that if measures are taken, uh, <clears throat> We expect uh, the atmosphere to uh, not to go uh, too far into uh, uncharted uh, territory. Drastically reducing greenhouse gas emissions is widely agreed to be the best defence against further human-induced warming, along with protecting and rehabilitating key ecosystems. But with extreme weather events already hitting, adapting is vital to protect life. Uh, climate change is now happening. We're seeing more extreme weather of many types. We're not prepared for those increased severity and uh, extremity of extreme weather. Uh, so we need to be better prepared. Last year, global temperatures were more than one degree Celsius above pre-industrial levels leaving only a tiny margin to avoid two degrees or more of warming and the catastrophic effect scientists say that would have on the planet. Germany faces a gigantic task to achieve its climate protection goals. That's how Climate Minister Robert Habeck put it as he unveiled a new report that shows Germany could miss its emissions targets for 2030. DW's Michaela Kufner talked to Minister Habeck about what's standing in his way. Minister Habeck, so the money is there, but how will you convince the 16 federal states to make 2% of their area available for renewables to get over the not in my front yard mentality? I think we have to do both, talk with the people, come to a spirit that uh, will make things happen. And on the other hand, going into the regulations, if Germany is now starting building up its infrastructure only on the basis of renewable energies, that means, of course, that the security of the infrastructure relies on renewable energies. And there, one cannot say, OK, I understand this, but don't build a windmill in my backyard or in my country. So we have to change the rules, the laws as well. So is environmental protection and CO2 neutrality a contradiction in the future? That what seems to be a contrast mustn't be a, con a contrast. We can solve this conflict. We can give nature, the big birds, the uh, sea eagles and other birds more space, but and find another place for windmills, but we need to find a place for windmills. We are talking about 2% of the German, uh, German area for windmills. That means 98% are free for that, and this should be enough space for nature. What is Germany's expectation of its European partners now, but also as it goes into the G7 presidency? The G7 is another possibility and another step to come forward with the outroll of renewable energy and the production of green hydrogen worldwide. And this is the next step now. We are focusing on windmills and solar. But in the 2030s, we need huge amounts of green hydrogen for our industry, for our power plants. We have them there now running on natural gas, then switching over to hydrogen. 
and uh, the talks in the G7 format should uh, smoothen the path for that. Robert Habeck, Trade and Climate Minister, thank you very much. Thank you.